To my friends and colleagues across the world in the United States as it relates to healthcare and the coronavirus, this is a message that I never thought in a million years I would have to share or inform with all of our healthcare workers. And what I'm talking about is what the devastation that's taking place with the coronavirus in the United States, how we're having an exponential growth in the number of deaths that are taking place each day, each week, and we're not even close to being through this pandemic that's occurring. And what's very disappointing is that a lot of us healthcare providers, physicians, nurses, respiratory therapists, um, nurses, everybody involved in the healthcare system, we just tax everything like that, even the medical scribes, we don't have the basic protective, um, personal protective equipment that we need to do our jobs. And that's not only putting ourselves at harm, but also patients at harm, and there are consequences for this, and change needs to be implemented sooner than later to help our health care providers so that we can address this issue. And one of the big issues or concerns that's taking place with all of this, not having equipment, the necessary resources, is that one in 10 of the people that are coming down with the coronavirus are actually health care workers. And when they're getting it, they're not just getting the type where you're going to quarantine at home for 14 days or so. They're getting a lot more extreme, virulent form of COVID-19 that's really wrecking havoc on their bodies. And what we're starting to realize and think is that the patients who already are coming to the hospital, they're pretty acute. They're desaturating. And their um, just outlook is kind of grim already. And so what's happening is they have an elevated viral load of coronavirus. And so that means as a healthcare provider, if we get any of those droplets or anything aerosol on us and we ingest that, we're ingesting a higher um, viral load content where it's going to stricken the healthcare providers a lot worse than if it's somebody on the street or you see in passing somewhere, although you should be practicing social distancing. I know it's very hard to do when you're thinking, well, it's something that we don't see. I Everybody else is walking around fine. I think the media is blowing it out of proportion and all of that. No, we need to really flatten this curve to really um, get control of this because we just don't have enough resources with ventilators, personal protective equipment to deal with everybody that's coming through and it, and it's just going to only get worse and worse and I, I saw a report out there that there's not enough resources and there's not enough personnel to work and help with everybody and so now there's a big debate I'm not sure you guys are aware of this about do not resuscitate orders and they might put a moratorium on that where it's just not feasible or viable for if somebody goes into cardiac arrest or they go into a code for medical providers to get in and try to intervene and save that patient just because of how many other patients that are going to be needing those resources and also you don't want your healthcare team getting sick and contracting the virus when they're doing CPR air droplets and any type of body fluid because that can get on them and, and, and anything like that so that's a huge thing and people are thinking like this is America. This is the United States of America. I can't believe that we would even have these type of debates, but it's happening. It's occurring. And unfortunately, everything that you hear on the media isn't actually accurate of what's occurring. And people just don't know how devastating this process is. And people are thinking, oh, this is just a flu. It's not that bad. No, this is worse than the flu. This is a different type of virus that's attacking your body and in particular your respiratory system. And what's happening is that you need oxygen, you need to oxygenate, ventilate, exchange oxygen, carbon dioxide to keep yourself alive. But what's happening is basically this um, virus is attacking your respiratory 
respiratory epithelium, the alveoli can't exchange, and then what's happening is basically your lungs are drowning in fluid. And that's what's happening to people. You just have too much fluid in your lungs. So think about yourself like drowning. That's what's occurring to these patients. That's how they're dying or they're having something with the cytokines, interleukin-6, getting a little bit sciency on you guys, but they're having a huge um, inflammatory response to the virus that's overwhelming. It's just stronger than what's actually needed because the body's just trying to fight off what's occurring and then that's just going to put them in a deteriorating state and you can't really, you try, you can do whatever you can to try to stop that process, but it's just too much for a lot of patients to handle and deal with and then they ultimately deceive, die, pass away because of just because of what's happening with that and so these are just things that you need to be aware of and New York, um, California, Washington, those are some of the really hard, hard hit areas and it's only going to get worse. You have more and more people coming in because if they're finding out that this virus is kind of can incubate in the body for a period of several days, I think about nine days or so, I'm not sure exactly on the numbers because that's always evolving with that and so people are like, okay, I'm going to just fight it off at home, try to do the best I can then they realize they're not doing better and two things are going to bring you into the hospital if you're short of breath and you feel like you can't wheeze and you're weak those are the things especially when you're short of breath that's going to prompt you to come to the hospital because nobody wants to be in a situation where they feel that they can't breathe short of breath dyspnea whatever you want to refer to it as those that's one of the things that's going to get you into the hospital and just not even having the resources for that and then this thing with our health care providers this is something that you need to be aware of and you need to start thinking about when I said it about like 10% of the cases are now turning into healthcare providers the ones that are on the front lines trying to keep you safe and trying to get you back to optimize your health are the ones that are coming down with this virus you need to start taking precautions for yourself I'm not talking about just a personal protective equipment and everything that you're doing at the hospital but you really need to think about getting your affairs in order and everything in regards to to that I know it's probably thinking you know, like I'm too young that's not something I would even think about or whatever but it's something you need to do and one of the things you need to do is you need to start thinking about having a will because we all know we're going to die at some point and so you need to get that will in place now before it's too late you, where you can kind of direct where you want things to go all of that stuff you want to make sure that's taken care of and I'll tell you this I was I've political science major and um, undergrad so I follow politics all the time I'm big on that and everything in regards to that and one of the things that all the presidents do I'm not sure when this started but before they're sworn in or like right in that transition period between like president-elect and actually taking the oath for the Oval Office they actually meet with a team and they lay out like everything that's going to happen like their will what type of funeral they're going to have where they're going to be bury that all of that stuff is done in advance because if a president unfortunately dies in office or whatever that's a huge affair everything associated with that pomp and circumstance and the memorials and everything like that they just need to have everything in place for that so if trump has it obama has it clinton has it george w bush um, carter has it they all have that stuff planned out in advance so everybody knows what's going to happen what's going to take place for that and so as a healthcare provider, anybody, you need to really start thinking about, okay, what are the things that you want done for yourself? And f from that, like perspective, funeral, burial arrangements, anything like that, your will, where do you want your assets or anything to be directed to, start thinking about that. And especially at the age of most of us being pretty out of the sub 40 side the people who are watching this for the most part there's a lot of life changes moving to a different house um, different vehicles different assets liabilities and even spouses fiances significant others things that you want to make sure that that's taken care of and properly um, allocated for you want to make sure you do that and then also you want to make sure that you have disability insurance because we don't know what 
what's going to be the long-term effects and consequences of this and what if you can't work you want to make sure that you have a source of income to be able to um, live your life and take care of yourself the best way possible and not be a financial burden to anybody else and be able to go about and do what you want to do because we're, le we're learning that there's gonna there's a lot of pulmonary stuff involved with this pulmonary fibrosis um, and substantial issues going on and, and some of that could be permanent damage that it might preclude you from practicing medicine the way that you want and you need to have a source of income available for that and then also you need um, long-term um, insurance I'm not sure exactly the term of this and that's for if in case you need to be institutionalized like if you're in a like nursing care facility uh, long-term rehab a lot of the times you're like health insurance and stuff doesn't cover that it only covers it for a certain period of time but if you're going to be there for an extended period of time that's a whole lot of money that you're going to be putting to like a nursing home or a skilled care facility that you want to make sure isn't taking or eating up all of your resources for anything else that you want to do because if you're young and you get this or even if you're older and you get it that could be a significant amount of time that you're there and a significant amount of money that you're going to be expending on this that that's going to need to be paid out for you to um, continue doing what you need to do as a person and so those are some things that you need to consider and think about now everything i'm telling you guys i'm not a financial guy i'm not a financial planner i'm not a legal guy i'm not a lawyer attorney anything like that this is just advice and things that you need to consider and think about right now to kind of long-term plan and just make sure you're on the right footing with everything because we just don't know how this is going to play out and what's going to happen and you want to mitigate your risk as best as possible so you know certain things are going to happen and so you need to prepare for them in advance now because when you're in the middle of it you're in the thick of it it's going to be a lot harder things like pre-existing conditions or what excuse me, pre-existing conditions or whatever, or you're in the hospital because it could change in a moment. It can, in like a split second, everything could change. You want to make sure that you're protected and you're doing everything possible for that. We Obviously, we don't want anything to happen to you, but these are things that you really need to consider and just think about. So get in touch with um, some professionals in the financial sector, insurance sector, and legal sector and just kind of go over um, what are your options and what are some of the things that you should be doing to prepare yourself for anything that could potentially happen to you with your health, your financials, and from a legal perspective so that's just something I wanted to share with you because a lot of people were you're not thinking about that like I'm spending more time reading up on like ICU critical care algorithms all of that stuff the best treatment options out there and just trying to be on top of this so that when I have to get in there and do what I need to do it's just second nature and so that's what you want to do even with this you want to be prepared 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 and so get this stuff taken care of it's not something that you want to take lightly it's not something that i would expect i would be telling somebody like especially residents young doctors young um, health care providers nurses uh, respiratory therapists um, allied health professionals physicians assistants that these are some of the things that you really need to consider and start planning for but it needs to be done and just take it seriously and just do the best that you can and and I'm just thankful for everybody who's out there working hard and doing everything to treat patients and doing the best that we can with the resources that we have.